Hello and welcome. My name's Stephen Dickinson. You're joining us here for another Futurum live from the show floor here at Cher in New Orleans. I'm joined by Toma and Sherry. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So let, before we get started, let's get our listeners and viewers orientated. What do you do for BMC? And maybe let's just expand from there. Um, I'm a senior solutions engineer. I came over with the Model 9 acquisition. So the product is now uh, BMC Amy Cloud. Fantastic. And you, Tom? Uh, I'm also uh, part of the, the Model 9 acquisition. I do product management for Amy Cloud, so I'm in charge of all the uh, product-oriented stuff uh, in BMC Amy Cloud. Fantastic. So lots going on in the cloud space. Uh -huh. Hearing from clients I speak to and other vendors, hybrid, multi-cloud, data in multiple places, people thinking about cybersecurity. What are you hearing? What are those big mega trends that you're hearing, both from clients and from some of the other people that you speak to in the industry? Let's start with you. Sure, well, cyber resiliency is just becoming second nature. Everybody's just talking about it now. So the important part with our solution is to get that golden copy, that backup copy to a place where it's safe and that you can recover from. So hence going to the cloud, putting it on immutable storage. So getting that third party copy, getting it, that third copy out there in case anything goes on 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 premise, right. you're covered. Is that what's driving a lot of the conversations? It is. It is driving that a lot. And, you know, it's just making sure now you have um, uh, safe harbor compliancy, you have over in uh, and Dora. Dora over there. So they're having to meet these compliancies and it's an easy way to do it. Yeah, it's not just from a resiliency posture, it's also from a regulatory compliance perspective. Yeah. So what are you hearing, Tommy? There's a, maybe a European perspective or some of the other dynamics? So, yeah, so you do hear a lot about Dora these days now. Um, a lot of customers are interested in creating another copy. Uh, it also allows them to expand the portfolio, like creating a cloud-based copy instead of an on-prem tape-based copy. Uh, it allows you to create some cloud, uh, take leverage of cloud uh, capabilities like immutable copies, uh, safe uh, uh, copy, safeguarded copy of some sort um, that will give them the ability to recover basically anywhere uh, with network connectivity that, that will allow them to be more resilient. So you touched on tape there briefly. Lots of people uh, were talking about it with one of the other vendors were chatting. Some of those regulatory compliance about the length of retaining that data. Tape's always been an operational mm -hmm. challenge. How are people using something like the Amy Cloud portfolio to address some of those operational challenges? Well, tape, with tape, you have to refresh it every so often. It only lasts for so long, and those refreshes are very expensive. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is you're just putting it on another type of media that can be possibly broken into or, you know, have some kind of ransomware attack. Um, but not only that, it ends right there. The data ends its life cycle there on tape. So part of what we do is transformation of the data as well. So by putting it to the object storage, now they're, we're able to liberate that data and transform it on the object storage without having to recall it back to the mainframe and do the, trans the transformation there. So just removing a lot of that operational right. overhead around tape management effectively. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, and, and essentially also taking leverage of the cloud capabilities of doing transformation instead of doing the transformation on the mainframe that will only allow you to take a subset of the data. Once you push the data outside, you, you're open to doing more stuff with the data because it's outside. So opening it up and, and loading it to an, an analytics uh, data lake and that, that world opens up a new uh, uh, capabilities for mainframe data. I was going to ask that question about AI, ML, uh, bringing extra value to that data. Not only do you need to secure it and maintain it for regulatory reasons, that's a huge trove of data and value that you can unlock if you get it to the cloud. Are, are you starting to see mainframe shops start now that they've moved it to the cloud, able to get new advantage and uh, unlock competitive advantage now that they can do something with it in the cloud? I think almost all of them ask about it. Uh, they want to do something with it because it's a new capability that they didn't have before. They used it on tape, and tape is a silo. You cannot do anything with it. It's it's locked there. Maybe it's a good uh, uh, safeguard copy that, that can be touched or, or uh, tampered with. Uh, but now with cloud, you can actually create that immutable copy and also take that data and actually take leverage of it. So this is something that 
almost everyone wants to do. Mm -hmm. And you take the dependency off of the mainframe folks to do that transformation for you. Transformation can be time consuming, can run for hours, can run for days. Now you just move it over to the cloud. They can do the transformation. You don't have to be a mainframe person to run the transformation. So they get to the data, you know, when they need it. And is that taking the load off the from a four hour rolling average oh, or an MLC yeah, perspective? Absolutely. Because you're now processing that in the yep. cloud. Yep. Fantastic. Absolutely. So we hear a lot about the skills gap in the mainframe space, people aging out, those baby boomers starting to finally mm -hmm. retire. How's that impacting this whole data security and data resiliency landscape? So it's more the data management of the solutions there, and the data management solutions that are out there today have been around for 30, 40 years. So these are, you know, the people that are working with these tools today, they've been around for 30, 40 years. So that doesn't give much of who you're going to hire to replace them because they haven't been around for 30, 40 years mm -hmm. using these tools. So we're helping to simplify the data management. We're eliminating the complexity of managing data on a, a daily basis. That's huge. And essentially providing a UI rather than having a, a, an ISPF based tool in order to manage all this is something that simplifies everyday work. So and that's the barrier to entry to get into this. It's a lot simpler mm -hmm. to do these yeah. tasks. Yeah. Therefore, people earlier in their career can take on these it tasks. It takes minutes to understand how to do it. Yeah, right. exactly, right. exactly. One thing we've touched on and we've sort of glossed over, maybe so I'm going to come back to it. We've talked about immutable copies. Obviously, that leads me into a cyber resiliency, cyber security conversation. We talked about DORA metrics, just uh, DORA as a regulatory framework. Tell me a little bit more about what you're seeing and what the impact is from that. So customers want to have the ability to create immutable copies in the cloud in order for them to have a, a, um, a different strategy for recovery. So adopting cloud capabilities allow them to actually expand their portfolio of protecting their mainframe data instead of using on-prem tape. Uh, and cloud allows them to create those, those immutable uh, copies that they can take leverage of and recover from them when, when they need to and essentially get that regulation um, off the table instead of uh, adapting a new strategy with tape. Fantastic. Are you hearing the same things with the oh, clients? Oh, abso absolutely. Yeah. And just the ease of recovery now. Can you imagine if you have to go and do a recovery from a virtual tape library, right? It's going to take you hours. I mean, I used to do DR myself, so it would take you hours. Now you just have access to it right away. Everything in the cloud, right? Yep. 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 Well, this has been a fantastic conversation. Thank you very much for joining me on the show today. Well, thank you. Thank you for having us. You've been watching another episode of Futurum live from the show floor here at Share. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks very much for watching. <laughs>